So I want to write another for loop um, to highlight one particular issue that we encounter frequently. So we'll create another public static void method. This one's going to be called off by one. And so we're going to write another for loop like we wrote yesterday. I'm going to continue to write the for loop on three lines of code. I'm going to continue to annotate all four parts of our looping structure just to keep reinforcing that. Here's what we want, we want this method to do. We want the, this method, we want to print five asterisks. That's what we're going for here. Um, in Python, we can do print and then like the asterisk and then times five, right? And we can actually duplicate the character five times, which is super convenient. We can't do that in Java. There's no such thing. If we want to print five asterisks, we need to write a loop that prints five asterisks. So it's a little more awkward. But that's okay. Four into i equals zero. So one piece of convention. Usually when we're doing a for loop that's just going to be counting, we use the local variable i, um, kind of like it's as our index. Um, much like in Python, we say for i in range 10, same idea. So similar convention of using i. So this is our initialization part. Second, so that's the first part of the for loop. That's the initialization. Separated by a semicolon, the next part of the for loop is the condition i is less than or equal to 5. That's the condition. And the third part of our for loop, i++, plus plus, and then the closing parenthesis, is where we update the loop variable. So again, with the for loop, this is good review from yesterday, we have three different parts of the for statement the initialization, then a semicolon, the condition, then a semicolon, and the loop, um, updating the loop variable, which is not always, but in this case, incrementing the loop variable i by one. And then inside the curly brackets, which defines the body of our loop, we can print the asterisk. And that's the body. So we have all four parts of the loop, initialization, condition, updating the loop variable and the body. And then we've been printing outside our loop, we've just been printing done to make it clear if we run multiple methods where one finishes and the other starts. So go ahead and compile and run this. Let's see what it looks like. In fact, I'll make it a little bit smaller so I can compile and run it as well. And if we look here, we see one, two, three, four, five. We see six asterisks, not five asterisks. Okay? We are quite literally off by one asterisk. All right? Programmers have this bug all the time. In fact, it's so common that there are memes and jokes and comics all about the infamous off by one error. Okay. Um, we can be off by one in lots of different ways. And we'll explore those throughout the year. But in this case, it, um, it is common with for loops. In general, it's common with for loops executing, and not just for loops, while loops as well but for loops executing one too many or one too few times. So, what do we do about it? Well, here's, here's my, so I have some advice I'm gonna give you and then I'm gonna give you some advice from a former student. So here's my advice. You should carefully ask the following two questions. Should the initial value start at zero or one? Okay. One or the other will make more sense. If we're usually, 
count just counting, we just want the loop to run so many times, by convention, just like in Python, um, usually we start at zero. So if you're writing a loop to print five asterisks, other people reading your code are going to expect to see four i equals zero as your initialization. Okay. Second question you should ask. Should the condition operator be less than or less than equal to? Make this a conscious decision. Usually, if we're starting at zero, we use less than. Because if we start at zero and we say i is less than five, the values of i will be zero, one, two, three, four. Hey, that's five different values of i. Our loop's going to run five times. Here's the advice from a former student. In fact, they were so excited about this, they printed it out and put it up, taped it to the whiteboard. Their advice was think. Don't compile and try at random. Great advice. Too often, students are like, hmm, not quite sure how I should write this loop. Not sure what value I should start at. Not sure when I should end. I'm just going to guess. And then they compile it and they run it and they're like, well, that didn't work. Let me change a number. I'll make it one bigger or one smaller and just try it again until eventually it works out. Great advice from this former student. Don't do that. Just stop and think. And this is where the tracing table technique that we learned yesterday and that we're going to do more today can really help you figure out what should your loop bounds be? Where should you start? Where should you end? All right, so this is what the off by one error is. So I'm going to add a little comment right here saying this should be i is less than 5. So definitely watch out for, for this. 